Hi. What are you doing? Taking this inner fender wheel out. Why? What did Bryce do? Somebody pulled up in front of him. He didn't hit a bus full of nuns? No. <laughs> It took it like a champ, though. So what are you getting after? Why? What does it do if you steer right now? Nothing. It does nothing. It's all locked up. Hey, guys. Automatic Garage back today. We got this real beauty of a 6.0 here. Well, she usually is, but she had a little uh-oh. Uh, had a Mercedes pull out in front of her, and this driver's side front took all the hit. Luckily, it didn't do any damage to the frame. All it did was uh, the gearbox is totally locked up on this thing from it taking a hit. So Lee is changing out his first super duty gearbox. He's super pumped about it too. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, gearbox, and we're gonna look everything else over. I wanna do the gearbox first, drive the truck, and uh, check everything else. I know that, that the ball joints are messed up on this side, but I wanna make sure all the other steering linkage is fine and we're gonna go from there. So anyways, let me turn you around here and Lee's gonna catch you up on what he's done. Hey, so what'd you do first? Hang on. You had to pull this bent up fender liner out? Mm -hmm. Then what? <coughs> and then you undo these hoses up here. What else did you undo before you did that though? There's a, this, a plastic thing right here that slides back and you have to undo the- Steering, steering stem, stem linkage. Stem bolt. Yeah. And then what? Then you came down here and did what? Did the pitman arm. Took the, the drag link off the pitman arm and now you're getting ready to do what? Take these bolts out. Yeah, and then we'll have it off on the floor. Yep. All right, so this is just kind of, I wouldn't say homemade contraption, but that's an old snap-on bearing puller that I kind of have to get sideways. On this newer style box, it works better on the older 9904 boxes. Uh, the body's a little bit smaller on the box. But anyways, you can get it around the pitman arm. I got the pitman arm itself sitting on this here. And then the other side is just sitting on the, the bearing puller. Um, anyways, I'm gonna heat this up. We're gonna press this right up. And just like always, I get busy heating it up and I forget to actually video when I press it out. Uh, there's about five pumps on here once I made contact and it just jumps right off of there. Um, heating it up makes it expand just enough where it's not a whole lot of pressure where you're worried about putting any undue pressure on that uh, pitman arm. Anyway, sorry, I get it all excited about heating it up and pressing it out and forget the video but we got that off all right pitman arm put back on <clears throat> don't be turning on your gearbox this is oriented in the absolute straight position uh from the factory when you get these because this is once again this is a new gearbox not a remanufactured so anyways we put our nut on lock tighted it and then uh, we put the old uh, milwaukee impact on it because it's supposed to go to 350 foot pounds I don't have a torque wrench that goes to 350 foot pounds. I know most people don't either. So you put that bad boy on four and I let it go until it stops spinning. Plus it's got Loctite on it. And you can see what other people have done with that other gearbox in the past. They've done the old air hammer method. And uh, of course, was choose your nut up. But anyways, so now let's put this thing on the truck. We'll have the steering where it to where it's functioning again. We can check everything else out. Get us a list of parts going for whatever else we feel like we need to replace. Um, and then we'll be ready to go back to the body shop. All right, new box is in. I lock tight these also, tighten them down. Um, we're gonna leave our uh, drag link off right now because I've just decided I'm gonna go on and replace both tie rod ends because boots are cracking already. And this thing did take a lick over here on this side. So why not do that? It'd be the right thing to do. So both tie rod ends, this lower boot is cracking here on the drag link. This upper one is new, or it's a Moog, boot's not torn. It seemed to be in good shape. We're gonna do a new steering dampener. We're gonna do new outer axle seals, or uh, axle tube seals, whatever you wanna call them. They're always kinda hard to find based on what you call them. And then uh, he's got brand new Moog ball joints in the back. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna check this knuckle out really good while we have it off. And uh, that should be it. Um, we're gonna see what kind of shape this spindle seal is in behind the hub here. We'll check the hub real good too while we're doing all this. But anyways, I'm gonna start pulling all that apart. We're gonna get this thing ready to go back to the body shop. All right, so we're gonna go through tearing down and doing one side as far as ball joints, checking brakes, doing that outer axle seal like we're talking about, doing this tie rod in. We'll go through that process. Uh, it's really pretty easy. Uh, these are T27s, you got three of them. Right there. Back them out.
Gotta get rough with it. Just work it out. There you go. Now we got that snap ring in there. I'm sure I'm gonna get in y'all's way to see it because the camera's actually in my own way to see what I'm doing. There you go, right there. <clears throat> and now you're free and clear to take your brakes off, pull your rotor off, and then we're ready to do the hub. All right, I did brakes on this truck within the last couple months, and I can see through here the pads got plenty of thickness to them, so we're going to leave the caliper mounted to the bracket. We're just going to undo our bracket here, which is a 21 millimeter for both of them. What I like to do is if you get in here and push the caliper both ways, it gives you a little bit of release on your pads so they aren't trying to grab so much. Just like that. We're gonna go get our hanger and hang that caliper up so it's not dangling. Pull your rotor off. Sometimes they'll be stuck. Of course, if you're up north, they will be for sure. So, uh, Beat on this round portion right here. Turn it around and just keep hitting on it. And you'll get it broke loose. So I spun this tire around a good bit before we ever even took it apart. Pulling the tire off and it felt fine. And this bearing hub assembly feels fine right here too. So I don't see anything. It looks damaged or cracked or nothing on it. So we're going to just pull this off and save it and put it back on. So let me get those undone. All right, before we pull this hub off, I'm going to go on and do this and get our tie rod loose because you can sit here and turn this uh, spindle back and forth all you want then freely for getting those nuts and stuff undone. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier then. All right, cotter pin out, little nut cover is off also, 21 millimeter again. I leave that just back off to the end because you're gonna wop on this thing. can finish taking it off. Oh, we're spinning. There we go. Not that dangle. She taught me how to dangle. So now the purpose in that is now you can do this all you want to access everything, especially these nuts that are right here on the back side for your hub assembly. You can get to those so much easier, um, flopping around, undoing your vacuum line, your ABS line, and everything else. Just, uh, it's way more convenient, not to mention, you're gonna have to do it eventually, so do it now. All right, we're taking our 21s off for the hub. Sometimes the studs will come out. It's fine if they do. All right, since we are not replacing the whole hub assembly, we're gonna remove our five millimeter Allen that holds our ABS sensor in. And when you take this out, give it a little bit of a wiggle back and forth and blow all that crap off around it so you don't drop it down in there. And then pull it out gently, because you don't wanna tear this up. I gotta let this lift down a notch, I ain't that tall. All right, just wiggle it back and forth, just like that. And this will actually fit out right through here. If you hold your mouth just right while you do it. Just like that. And you'll want to clean that up and grease it up before you put it back in, but our hub is loose now. We're gonna have to give it a couple watts with a hammer. Our hub seals 
look pretty good still look like they ought to be able to be reused nothing wrong with that so now uh, we're going to take this eight millimeter out right here that's holding the abs line onto the knuckle take our vacuum line off we're going to pull our axle out and then we'll be ready to bust these ball joints loose and put new ball joints on this side Socket is cracked. That sucks. Works better when your socket isn't busted. All right, got that off. Get our vacuum line off. It is on there. Now, a lot of times. This would be a good time to replace these if they're getting extra crusty. If they're coming apart in your hand, replace it. Otherwise, you're gonna get out there and need to lock your four-wheel drive in and it ain't gonna lock because you're gonna have so many vacuum leaks, it ain't gonna matter. All right, as far as getting this axle out, what I like to do, this thing is done anyway, let's get that out of my way. behind that lip. Give that thing a pop. Just like that. Come over to the other side and do the same thing. So we are going to replace these hub seals because this dude was stuck in there. So we kind of tore it up a little bit trying to get it out. This hadn't been tucked apart in a long time. It was mainly this part so it was really stuck. And I sprayed it down with some slither to try to get it to creep on out and it, it didn't want to. Sometimes you save them, sometimes you can't. A little rusty and crusty. Go on and give them a spray. Let that start sinking in on both of them. Then you start working on getting your cotter pin out up there. This was a Texas truck before he bought it. It hadn't been that awful long ago. I'm surprised this is as crusty as it is. Which I know some of you guys from up north are like, dude, shut your mouth. You don't know anything about crusty. And I don't. And I don't want to either. So I did not show checking these ball joints, but this truck was actually on the uh, to-do list for me for doing ball joints before this wreck happened. But... As you can see here, and here more than you can see probably. The bottom one is, is really bad and the top one's got a little bit of wear. So yeah, that's why we're doing this. All right, I broke my nice impact wobble the other day. So I'm doing this one with the breaker bar and a socket today because I haven't had time to go get another one from the tool man. Let me get done breaking this one loose. We'll do the bottom one. And we'll beat this knuckle out of here. All right, we got both of our nuts off. And now, I'm gonna have to leave this one barely on here. Keeps it from falling to the floor. If you break it loose like that. Gonna put that factory camber bushing back in. This, this is gonna go get an alignment anyways after being in this wreck just to make sure these ears and the knuckle didn't get tweaked at all because I'm I don't have a forty thousand dollar alignment machine here. All right, getting ready to do these ball joints here. Man, I am. Not on my A-game with the snap ring today. There we go. Snap ring on the bottom, no snap ring on the top. Oh, look at that. It's 
just floppy. All right, we got our 27089 OEM tools, ball joint press here that has been used and abused by me. All right, starting on the lower, this combination I have right here, we're not gonna be able to press it all the way out. It's gonna get the, the ball joint recessed up in here for the most part. And sometimes just one or two hits with a hammer after that, it comes right out. If not, we uh, gotta come up with some homemade stuff that I have down here to make it work because that's all the room you have with this factory stuff. Wop it with my little hammer. There you go. Lowers out. Let's get this upper. You got this little lip right here, which is really good at catching dust, dirt, debris, and everything else. So I like to clean that out on both upper and lower. This is not the ball joint mating surface. This is where the lip sits down in. And just make sure they're clean. I like to take some of this uh, 3M, uh, whatever you want to call it, scotch bright pad, and clean up the actual mating surface the ball joint because it gets some crud all in there sometimes and you want the ball joint to be able to slide in there and press in there straight and correct just make sure it's good and clean all right moog part numbers your lower is a k8607t and the upper is a k80026 of course this is for four wheel drive be different part numbers for two wheel drive um Y'all go ahead, if you want to bitch about these being uh, Moog, that's fine, whatever. I use them all the time, put them in these trucks, and they last great for me. I get so tired of seeing the comments about, oh, my God, you put Moogs in there. You'll be doing it again in three months. No. I got a truck with 275,000 miles on it, and I've put, uh, let's say I've done three sets of Moogs in it for the 275,000 miles. That's not too bad for ball joints, and I'm running offset tires and wheels. Anyways, uh, made in America. I like them. They work great. You can use whatever brand you want. Don't gripe at me about this brand. If you, you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to use it. Grow up. All right, pressing our upper in. Once you press either one of these in, look really good around your edge and get you a pick or whatever to make sure that it is seated all the way down. I'll just always double check that. I don't want to have any not seated all the way. All right, let's put this lower in. Put your retaining clip back on, snap ring. Make sure you're all the way in the groove. Put your grease fit in. It's much easier to do it now than it is to do it later. All right, put your boot on the top one. like that and we're ready to go back in all right before we put our spindle back on we're going to put 
our new updated axle seal in here. This is a national oil seal, this particular one is. Uh, there's your part number, 710701. You can get Dana Spicer, National, uh, whatever. Uh, they're all the same, pretty much. There you go. That's in there. I'm gonna show you what else you gotta do with this seal. So we already knocked our old seal off of here. But this is what I'm showing you. If you don't clean this up, you're gonna take this rusted up part of the axle. So the seal slides right over here and slides over this very smooth. You'll get to right here and this is really aggressive and it's gonna start messing up that, that brand new seal you just put in. So what I do is go over to the, the wire wheel on the bench grinder and I clean all this off and get it nice and smooth. Then I'll put just a little bit of oil on it and I'll slide it through there and that keeps from messing that brand new seal up. Here's what I was talking about. Go run this thing on the wire brush and get all that scaly rust off so you don't mess the seal up. <clears throat> We're ready. Uh, got the old seal off of here. We knocked our hub seal off. It's ready for the new one to go on there. I'm gonna grease this U-joint in. We're gonna slide the axle in and then put our new hub seal on after we get the, uh, the knuckle back on. All right, so we got our knuckle stuck in here. You just tighten up at the top one, finger tight. You're gonna torque the bottom one first. This is the most important part <clears throat> of doing these ball joints is to torque them in the correct order. And while you're torquing them, moving the spindle back and forth or the knuckle back and forth. So you go 35 on the bottom, 69 on the top, and then come back to the bottom and do 150. Uh, and the only thing you're gonna change about going maybe a little bit more is if your cotter pin doesn't line up on the top, don't loosen it up. You tighten it up just a little bit more if you have to to get your cotter pin to line up. And while you're torquing it, you work it back and forth to make sure you don't have anything binding. You should be able to move it just like this even after you torque these all up. So. 35 on the bottom, 35, let's go 69 on the top. You still see, we're moving back and forth. We're gonna go 150 on the bottom. So everything is torqued up and we have nothing binding. That's exactly what you want. All right, I applied a little bit of grease inside of our knuckle here from when we drive the seal in. Also put a little bit of grease on our axle shaft here. That's to prevent messing up this brand new seal. Just put that dude in, slide it in. And we also greased our universal there also. And get your splines lined up with your axle, or with your differential, I mean. Now we're gonna get our new axle seal, or hub seal. All right, we got our axle seal driver here. You gotta have this tool to not mess up the seal. Till it seats on the hub assembly. Almost there. There you have it. Going back on with our hub assembly and our dust shield. Remember your dust shield goes to the front. We did lubricate the O-ring up on the hub assembly. Make sure you torque your hub nuts. 135 foot pounds. sure your ABS sensor is clean and lube that little o-ring up where it goes back in there so you don't tear it or mess it up either 
Put your bolt back in it. Put your snap ring back in. Put your hub assembly back on. If you still don't have a complete gasket around here, just give it a little smear of RTV silicone around it to seal it up to keep junk, junk out of here. All right, so once you get to, to this point, push it in. Don't keep beating on it. You have one little locating pin right here. Just pull out just a little bit, rotate your hub assembly. Let the locating pin line up. It'll go in there and that lines up your three bolt holes. Just make sure it's seated. Put those in, don't over tighten these. They'll break easy, just snug them up real good. Put your rotor back on. Then you can put your brake caliber back on. Make sure you do not twist your brake cable or sorry, brake hose, don't put a kink in it. Put your vacuum line back on. And this side is done as far as doing ball joints, doing that outer axle seal, doing your hub seal. We check the brakes, all that good stuff. One more thing, don't forget to grease your ball joints. These are new ball joints, but that doesn't mean they don't need to have grease in them. You need to pump them up with grease, make sure they're greased very well. All right, so I'm getting started on this side. I went on and pulled our steering bar off, uh, our drag link off. I still got to pull the steering dampener off because it's shot and <coughs> just slides in and out, zero effort. Um, anyways, so we will catch up when we're doing the new tie rod ends and the end on the drag link, and I'll show y'all how I pull the tape and uh, get the toe set. Like I said, this is going to get in alignment, but I want to go on and have it really close, or, or it will be right, but they'll check it anyways. So, uh, yeah, we'll catch up then. All right, we got the new end on our drag link, and we got both of our new tie rod ends on. Um, Easiest way to do this is vice. Uh, just put it in the vice and do one end at a time. And then I just kind of readjust them close to where you can tell the thread stopped on the adjusters. That's just to get it in the ballpark because we're gonna adjust all that when we get on the truck. That way you're not having to adjust any more than you have to because we knew, know that this was at least in the ballpark, if it, even if it wasn't perfect. So I'm gonna put all this on the truck. We're gonna get the steering dampener back on and then uh, we can torque everything and start adjusting our steering. So I was thinking I was about to wrap this up and I forgot he brought this Rough Country inch and a half leveling kit that we got to put on. I need to do that before I go to adjusting the steering because that will affect the drag link and uh, centering the steering wheel up and stuff like that. So anyways, I'll walk y'all through doing that also while we're doing it. It looks pretty simple. All right, you got to remove your bracket here for your brake line first. Remove this 18 for your sway bar. Remove your lower shock bolt. And we do have the axle sitting on jack stands. So we're gonna raise the truck up now so we can remove the cool springs. <coughs> All right, once you either raise the truck up on the lift as I have or drop your axle if you're doing this out of lift with your floor jack, pull your cool spring out with this one handed. And now you have access to that bolt down there in the cup, which we're gonna remove next. All right, so now that's free, and now that's where your little tab goes here. All right, so it does come with a new longer bolt for holding the retainer on, and you can see the shape of this, how it's tapered. The taper follows that portion right there on the knuckle. So let me get all that junk cleaned off, and we'll set it in there. All right, we got the spacer sitting there, as you see. We got our new bolt. Just line the hole up, tighten that down. And then we're ready to put it back together. All right, put your cool spring back in. You can see it has a little stop right here that it sits again at the bottom. Watch your brake line because it is does get a little bit tight clearing all this. So now we're just going to let it back down and guide the cools back into the little bucket up there. All right, now you reinstall your bolt for your sway bar. This does have a washer that goes in between the sway bar in here. I'm going to put y'all down because it takes two hands for me to do this. But anyways, put that bolt in. Put your bolt back in your shock and put your 10 millimeter back in your bracket right there and uh you're all done you're good to go easy leveling kit install all right we are all together i just set uh, our toe in i gave it an eighth inch of toe on the front all i do is pick a tread on the tire that matches all the way around i hook my tape over it go to the other side on the front of course you make sure your tires are as straight as they can be before you even adjust it um, anyways, get a measurement on the front, get a measurement on the back, and then make your adjustment. Give yourself an eighth inch tighter measurement on the front. Eighth to three sixteenths, whatever you prefer. 
Um, this is going to go to an alignment shop anyways because it's been in this wreck and we want to double check that nothing got tweaked on the axle or nothing like that anyways. So uh, they'll be probably double checked and maybe adjusting a little bit more because they have a $40,000 machine that I don't have. All right, we got to bleed our new uh, steering gearbox now. So we're going to fill up our, our power steering fluid because it had all drained out from the leak that it had. So we're going to fill it up, crank the truck up. We're going to steer back and forth about three quarters of the way, left to right, back and forth. Don't go all the way to the stops. You're going to keep doing that until uh, the whining stops and you have no more frothy fluid in here and you want to make sure that you do not run this dry while you're doing it. Otherwise, you're starting back over. All right, we are all together. Level kit, all new front end pretty much, new steering box, bled the box. Uh, checked everything else out since it was in this little fender bender here. So uh, this thing has not been driven for probably over two months now. Uh, I've cranked it up twice, let it run, made sure nothing else was leaking, busted, or anything like that other than the gearbox. So let's go take this for a spin, see how it drives, make sure everything else is good. Truck drives great. <clears throat> we just have an issue with the vibration down here in the floor, and it's the downpipe has either touched the frame or it's barely touching the body, one or the other. So I got to get down there and do some prying around on it and see what it is. I almost got the steering wheel, just slightly cocked to the left. Really close, did it by eye. So I'll get Lee to come out there later, hold the steering wheel uh, <clears throat> correctly, and I'll uh, adjust on that later. But anyways, drives good. No playing the steering. Don't feel anything out of balance, nothing like that. Even that wheel that got hit, which it barely bent that outer lip on it. Just, I mean, you gotta look for it, so. He just got these 20s not too long before he had the wreck, so it's good to know that everything is fine with it. Sounds good. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video on getting this 6 0 back to being roadworthy again. It's headed back to the body shop in the morning to get to looking all pretty again. So uh, we'll give you all an update on that when it gets back so you can see it all in its normal state, but it's driving great. All the front end feels good and stable now. Steering's really tight with that brand new gearbox we put in it. So y'all go check out all of our other content on the channel, a whole lot of power stroke stuff. Probably gonna be doing some stuff on old white trash here for too long. It's, uh, in, it's been neglected by me because I've been so busy working on other stuff, but she's still looking pretty good. But anyways, check out all the content, automaticgarage.com, Facebook and Instagram. We appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll holler at y'all later.